Cheers. It's good to be back. It's been a long, crazy summer, and I'm finally getting back into my music room and spending some time um, playing music again. Um, and recently here, I was on the Facebook page and had an interesting conversation with a couple guys about uh, the latency in Helix. Somebody was running the Helix, um, wanted to run it as an outboard side chain, basically, piece of equipment um, in their studio. And they wanted to know uh, what kind of latency was involved and um, if there was latency added by se sequential blocks within Helix. Um, if they added latency. So what we're going to look at tonight is we're going to look at the analog to digital conversion time, analog digital analog, a full round trip uh, of conversion time of Helix. And we're going to take a look at a couple different amp blocks and we're going to compare the latency incurred by each amp block to the DSP usage. Uh, and then we're also going to take a look at um, an effect block. I'm going to take a look at a delay. Um, that's just because it did something kind of weird and I thought it was interesting. Um, and we'll go from there. So we're going to be taking a look at my oscilloscope, which is over here. And here we go. Okay. So what I've got here is I have my oscilloscope set up. Now I have two paths going on here. Um, I have the lower path, which is the straight signal. I have the upper path, which is um, the signal routed through Helix. Um, we have an impulse going on here. What we have is we have a 250 hertz impulse. And what 250 hertz equates to is 4 milliseconds of time. So it means every 4 milliseconds, this thing's making a pulse. And what we can do now is we can measure with these subdivisions on the oscilloscope how long between impulses. So if we go from peak to peak, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. Eight boxes with five subdivisions, which is 40 total subdivisions, four milliseconds, which is a known interval from peak to peak, leaves me at a tenth of a millisecond per subdivision. So now, knowing that I'm a tenth of a millisecond per subdivision, I know that this is my impulse and this is my helix. So the distance between this and this is my latency. So what we can do now is we go, we know we have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 and a half, 18, right? 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 1.85 um, milliseconds in lag between my initial impulse and my impulse coming back from the helix. So that is the amount of time that it takes round trip analog to digital back to analog to go through helix. An important thing to note about this is that each subsequent time you do this adds more time, meaning you have in guitar input and a quarter inch output in Helix. That's 1.8 milliseconds. You also have four loops in Helix. You can add four loops together plus your initial guitar in and your, uh, and your quarter inch out and you can end up with a total of nine milliseconds of delay if you stack them sequentially on top of each other. If you run them in parallel obviously it would be less. I'm just going to change my routing. In this patch what I have is I have again my two paths, I have um, an upper path and a lower path, and all these blocks are currently turned off. Yeah, everything's off. Okay, so I'm coming in return one, and I'm going out send one and two, and here I'm coming in return two, and I'm going out send one and two. This one's panned hard right, and this one's panned hard left. So what I have is I have two paths, both going through Helix, and they're both at 1.8 millisecond delay, and they're lined up with one another because they both have exactly the amount of same, the exactly same amount of round trip analog to digital to analog conversion time. So there's no difference between path A and path B. And now, as I put things into one of the paths, we'll see if it adds latency. So what I'm going to start with 
is I'm going to start with this right here. Now, this is the Del Sol 300. It's the Sun Coliseum 300, and it is the lowest DSP allocation amp within Helix. This is from Ben Vesco's um, Helix DSP allocation chart, and if you haven't checked that out, you should. It's the best one I know of. It's really, really accurate. Um, seems to be, anyway. And we love Ben for making this. At any rate, this, um, I just wrote this down. The Sun Coliseum has 10.39% of DSP allocation. We'll come back to why that's important in a minute, but this is what we get. So let's kick it on, and we see our signal move. Turn it back off, turn it back on. Okay, now we move exactly 2.5 subdivisions. Just about 2.5. Two 2.5 subdivisions times 0.4 milliseconds per subdivision equals 1 tenth of 1 millisecond. So 0.1 millisecond delay due to the lowest DSP allocation amp in Helix. Interesting. Now, let's take a look at the next thing. And this is where it starts to get a little interesting. So if we go to the next amp, which one do I have loaded up here? Let's put, let's put this one up here. Okay. This is the most DSP heavy amp in Helix. This is the Brit Plexi Jump. This amp is at 41.23% of DSP allocation. So this is almost just it's 3.98 times as DSP heavy as the um, as the Del Sol. So what we would expect would to see something would be to see something very close to four milliseconds of delay. Let's see what we get. So we come over here. We've got one, two, three and a half subdivisions after zero with the plus the two before. So that's five and a half subdivisions. Five and a half subdivisions is times 0.04 per subdivision is 0.22 milliseconds. Little over half of what we expected. So we're not sure yet why this is. Let's take another look at something different now. Let's take a look at another amp. Now this is the angle meteor. Now the angle meteor is 33.35% of DSP allocation for this amp. And let's see what we get on this amp as far as latency. Now in this amp, we've now moved 1, 2, 3, 4, just a shade under 5, plus 2, just a shade under seven. seven, six and a half subdivisions. Six and a half times 0 0.04 is 0.26 milliseconds or more, more latency than the highest allocated DSP amp in Helix. There's a couple interesting thoughts on why, and I'll, I'll get to that in a few minutes, but I just wanted to show that it's not necessarily entirely DSP related, the latency. Um, I'm sure the DSP has to do with it, but there's some other things going on here. Um, the one last thing I want to show you was an effect block, and this is kind of interesting. Okay, this is a delay block. I used a simple delay. And if I take my mix and I put my mix on zero, or on, yeah, zero percent, I only got dry signal, everything lines up perfectly, and there's no latency at all. If I bring my mix up to 50, or up to 100, let's just go straight to 100. I'm getting five, six, seven, eight, nine, a shade over nine subdivisions, right around nine, let's just call it nine subdivisions of latency, even with the time parameter set at zero milliseconds. So, okay, I get, maybe that means we have, you know, 0.36, it would be milliseconds of latency with the delay. Well, let's see what happens now. Let me take the delay and let me go up to a tenth of a millisecond, which would mean if we add a tenth, we should be at 0.46. But it doesn't move. Let's add two tenths. It still doesn't move. Let's go to three tenths. It still doesn't move. Let me go to four tenths. And now it moves. And now it moves, interestingly, to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten subdivisions. 
10 subdivisions times 0.04 is exactly 4 milliseconds. My conjecture on this is that there's actually 0.35 milliseconds of latency in the delay program, in, the, in that DSP allocation, that little, little software packet. And the first three numbers are just mapped to the minimum. So 0, 0.1, 0.2 and 0.3 are all mapped to the minimum amount of DSP and then 0.4 it's accurate and after 0.4 milliseconds it's all accurate. The reason this came up was because I was looking to see if I could use this on a parallel path to dial out the latency of an amp um, but alas it doesn't have a tight enough parameter that we can do that because the amps are coming in at, in the twos and this doesn't even show up in the radar until in the threes. All right, so I want to conclude with a few thoughts on, on, on some of this. Um, first, I want to talk about the delay. Um, the only reason I showed the delay is because I thought it was interesting um, that the parameter didn't actually move the, the latency until it got to 4 milliseconds. Is that the latency of the delay? Is that delay modeled after a bucket brigade, and that's how long it takes even when it's on zero? I, I don't know. That's not my point. The, the point of, is, it is a, a delay is literally, it's a latency machine. It's designed to add latency and repeat it. So to complain about how latent the latency machine is, is sort of a silly thing. The only reason I pointed it out is because I was trying to use it in a parallel path to repair the phase relationship caused by a block above it. So if I put a sine wave in, in the upper path and a sine wave in, in the lower path and I add a delay to the lower path and an amp to the upper path, I could dial the delay and get both paths back in phase. Unfortunately, the amps are in the 0.2 millisecond range and the delay doesn't pick up until 0.35. Now, put a couple of things in the upper path and you can probably make it work, but that was why I discovered it. So again, it's no complaints and there's no th stone throwing. It's just, it is what it is. My next thought I want to talk about real quick is I want to talk about the amplifiers and how the DSP allocation doesn't necessarily line up with the latency of the blocks. Um, and I, I have a theory on the reason for this and um, I'm pretty sure this is what it is. Um, if you look at the case of the Del Sol, it's a bass amp um, and bass amps they're loud as hell, but there's not a lot of preamp gain. They're not a, they're not designed to overdrive and clip signal and distort like guitar amps. They're just designed to make big things loud. So realistically, they probably have two preamp tubes. It gets clean. It just stays clean through both the preamp tubes, and it goes to the power amp tubes, and it probably has six KT88s that just roar. So if you think about what sequentially has to happen inside that amp, it comes in, it goes through one gain stage, it goes through another gain stage, up two tubes will be four gain stages, if they're all even used, and then it goes to the power amp and it's split, one half the wave goes one way, one half the wave goes the other way, and it gets blown out the speakers. Not a lot of sequential things have to happen. If we think about the Brit Plexi Jump, um, you have the high channel and the normal channel. It's actually two preamps in that amp. And the upper path and the lower path are actually processed in parallel. And then the two paths come together. There may be another preamp tube there, and then it goes, I'd have to look at the schematic, but then it goes out to the power section and it goes out. So you have certain things happening in parallel and then things happening in series. If we consider the angle meteor, the angle meteor, again, I don't know the schematic off the top of my hand, but it's a high gain amp and it's going to have more gain stages in the front end. Again, these gain stages have to happen in series. They can't happen in parallel because after each after each tube in an amplifier, there's an EQing thing that happens, then it goes to the next tube, and then there's another EQing thing, and then it goes to the next tube. So each specific gain stage voices the amplifier. And if you were to try and do that, you can't do that in parallel. It has because it gets altered after each step. My Mesa Boogie has seven preamp tubes in it. I don't think also, I think five are on at a time, but you know, seven preamp tubes can be up to 14 gain stages. So when you start putting sequential gain stages like that and you can't process in parallel, it slows things down. That's why you see more latency in an amp like a high gain amp like the Angle Meteor than you would perhaps in an amp like 
the Del Sol or even the Plexi, which has the most DSP allocation because it's a very complicated model, but not as many things happen in series that can do things in parallel. At any rate, those are my thoughts for tonight. If you're interested and you like this stuff, comment, subscribe, let me know. I'll put this on the Facebook page. You can talk to me there. Um, and cheers. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.